I'm excited to live it even more. We have we have a lot of laughs on here, a lot of positivity, but it's 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 a quest and a muscle to to really live it every day, and it's it only gets better. And we've gone through many. There have been many people here that have that have gone through some some wild stuff. And it really is always the same, but the, the problem is that it's it sounds cliche and doesn't exactly, a lot of it doesn't ring true. And someone's like this, would just, just out of nowhere, like, work on yourself. You know, someone, you can hear that all the time. Work on yourself. You just, you have to have a reason. There's a reason for working on yourself. It's not it's not necessarily occupying your mind, though it is. Because if you have a vacuum, the things that fill the vacuum are going to be monstrous if you're in a state that attracts monsters. So you don't just work on yourself. It's not like getting back at at the world or getting back at somebody. It's not exactly that. It's you have to be in a state. You have to get yourself to a state where you can help yourself. You have to be a sort of a self-sufficient machine of uh, in in the old soul forge. And it's easy to let things fill the void. The world is a void. And it'll blast you if you let it. When I put out Outdoor Living, that was me in the Dark Night of the Soul. It wasn't just that, man. It was all the livings that were were a, a couple years of the Dark Night of the Soul. That's okay, though. Happens to everybody. Happens to everybody, no matter who you are. You have to go through some fun times, then then you have to go through some really fun times <laughs> but it always turn out it always turns out for the better and you really do need an outlet for it it can't be just the vacuum because you have no chance you self-destruct there was some good outlets for me when there were some long nights long there were some dark days I was you know I had to make light of it so I, I did a lot of video work and then started the streaming work and now look it's all light how do I not let the horrors of the world into my heart the answer is in the question item you don't let the horrors of the world into your heart you know that there is spiritual wickedness in high places that's really all you need to know you don't need to know much more than that. What you need to know is how to make yourself spir spiritually high in a low place, which is this world. The focus on that is energy and time much better spent. But you don't want to be just war have crimes in your head all the time because it makes you a criminal. It really does. You don't you don't have to worry. You're not going to be waking people up or changing the world. It doesn't doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. So you don't need to be telling everybody, like, oh, look at the stuff that's done. Like, no one's going to care. No one's going to believe you. You have to believe in what you know that is good. And use that. You don't use what is bad. You use what is good. You throw away the, the, uh, the chaff of the bad. And you harvest the wheat. I mean, these things have been said thousands of years ago. Thousands of years ago, they've been said. Mainly by Christ. But you can look at all the spiritual and the sacred texts, and I'll tell you, they all have the same wisdom. I'm not Mr. Expert in the sacred texts, but I know that the Bible probably has pretty much everything you'd ever need. Who's going to argue that? 
But I know that if I were to become learned, I would notice that they all say the same thing. I'd be much more effective in unlocking myself even more had I at my fingertips the ready wisdom of the true ascended masters all throughout history. You have to study everything. Because at the end of the day, they're all the same. They serve you in that they allow you to better serve life and serve God. And what higher calling is there in this world to praising your own creation and not praising yourself, praising your creation and the blessing of, uh, of consciousness. What better calling is there? And if, and if something is, allows you to better serve creation and God, then they are all of the same source. But if those who are not open to the truth in all the religions, those who are not open to the one supreme truth that pervades, perhaps even hidden, in, in the religions, is not devout in anything but zealotry. Because I know that when I peruse deeply peruse these sacred texts, I know they will all be one. I know they will all be from one source, because there is only one source. I mean, some people have conditions. Not me. You cannot have conditions when you're searching for the truth. The Emerald Tablets of uh, Throth? Is it Throth? Mention a master, it goes to say that it's connected in spirit with the divine, like other scriptures. Sure, sure, sure. But there, there are, there are texts. There are texts. There is not just one. To be truly free, And to be truly awoken, it means that every thought, every word, every action is in harmony with something that is good and something that is real. And, you know, not not <laughs> there are no one is perfect but in some ways someone who is truly ascended is perfect and it gives you a standard in which to to aim for to aim for such a high vibration of thinking to where nothing that is meaningless or bad even crosses your mind anymore and you only live to serve creation and the creator and it seems like a prerequisite to ascend out of this sentence that we're in and it's just it's just sometimes I think about that because you really do try you aspire to be perfect and you don't get to be perfect trying to be perfect you get to be perfect by shaving all of the imperfections out of you. That's why I'm, I'm just into 
not having even like the extreme crimes and things like that in your mind because it lowers you. Someone who is able to handle all those things and not even think about them and only think about the good and only broadcast the good to God and to those around them is someone who is worthy to uh, to not have to be a, a slave in this world. If you are a slave in thoughts, then you are a slave. If you're a slave in deeds, of course you're a slave. But if you're a slave in thoughts, you're still a slave. If you're a slave in belief, you're, you're still a slave. When you, when you start getting to know yourself, you see the things that you think or the things that you do that are just no good. And it's important that you're able to recognize that within yourself. All the masters and saints meditated. Christ is said to have prayed for four hours each and every morning. If we want to approach that, uh, what I'm talking about, we have to con have control over our minds and bodies and further directly ask for God to be in his presence, sure, which would in turn raise our consciousness in everyday life as well. Yes, yes. So when I think to myself, I mean, look, I'm not Mr. I'm not Mr. Guru. I talk about these things in order to discover the truth that is in me or that is being repelled from... Um, know original sin or uh, from prior conditioning and even when I think of that not meditating very strictly for an hour whatever the hell I mean four hours that you know the the thing is is that that's actually required that you operate like that if you're ever to escape this soul asylum. It's actually required to die without having reached your potential or to die without having unlocked your your transistor or whatever. That is fear. That is real dread you can flip that like a switch i'm sure i'm sure you could it's it's a binary process the fearing it and the dreading it is part of the sentence sure but the that unlocking is required and if you're too lazy or too blasted or too tortured you you're you're gonna be condemned in in some capacity and it's scary to think of that sometimes and I believe that Christ is said to have meditated for four hours each and every morning that sounds like the path that sounds like a required path or you can never how can you <clears throat> unlock yourself without putting in those hours. How can you hope? You can just, you can be intellectual, sure. You can talk about it forever. But if you don't walk it, you're no better off than if you didn't even know it was there. And it's scary sometimes to think of that. Because I, I... Who the hell in these tortured days is forcing themselves to meditate for hours? Or who here isn't inundated and ambushed by misdirection the second they close their eyes to pray or meditate? Who isn't bombarded? 
Who here is not bombarded by all manner of wasted thought? I'm like, you see these guys from a thousand years ago forgiving everybody, knowing how the machine really works, not out there in the streets, burning things, meditating for hours a day. Jesus Christ. And it's just, it's uh, in, the, in the modern life that you have here, which is the same as the ancient life. There is no difference between life right now or as it was, you know, in 1 AD, 1 BC, 33 BC, 33 to, to 1 BC, or rather AD 1 to 33, <laughs> it's the same way. No change at all. Just with technology, it has become easier to be annihilated. But that's okay, whatever. Because, you know, everyone has those moments. Everyone has those wandering moments. Everyone wanders out there in the wilderness. Even when they're sitting in bed. You could be wandering out there in the wilderness, even when you're in bed. Even when you're just, you know, dicking around. And what else is to be feared in this life than not being prepared for the afterlife? What else is there to be feared? Is there anything else to be feared? There's one thing to be feared. That's your own preparation for the afterlife. That's the only thing. And it's not exactly feared. This, you know, this... I'm trying to get there. Fear is never a good word. Not exactly feared. This fear will only stop you. Fear isn't the word. There is another word for it. But it's just where I'm at right now, you know? If you think about it, <clears throat> every day is like an incarnation and dying. If Christ prayed for a long time every day, is that supposed to be the ratio of time one has to spend in order to obtain freedom? <laughs> Meditation in the morning is like preparation for the battle, the day. It's training the soul, reducing the passions. This all sounds great. And after a lifetime of preparation, the soul will have climbed up. Probably it was Jacob's Ladder. See, that's that sounds good. That sounds good. That sounds like something worth fighting for. Not the bullshit of the world. The bullshit of the world makes slaves of us all.